Hello and good morning and welcome to another week. I spent the morning in bed since I off work again this week reading Today We Go Home. I'm about to make myself some lunch and get these books to the mail office because these need to go to the next person. What's my reading plan for this week? I have started compiling my April TBR. I still need to set up my shelf. I do want to finish um, Today We Go Home. I want to read Snowflower and the Secret Fan. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it. Khalid und das wilde Sprachpferd. It's just looking into differences between cultures cultures and language, which should be exciting. I'm also reading The Widow Clicquot. Sounds super fascinating, but right now it was still a little bit much about like the French Revolution and just setting the stage. And I had such a hard time getting into... And then I have an audiobook. It's the only audiobook that I still have on my, on my list. I'm moving winter to next uh, month, Illumine probably as well. Heart of Flames. It's such a huge, I want to read it right now. I'm already quite happy with my March reading. I just hope that out of the five books that I still have on my to-do list, I'm going to finish as much as possible. And that's my plan for the first two days. So this is on my April TBR and I will be reading that with Ilva. I'm already sure that I will start this on Wednesday. Oh, by the way, I got new socks. They are super warm. After the first like 10, 20 pounds, I started feeling colder. Having said that, let's get lunch. So cleaning up is done. I'm eating some of leftovers from yesterday. Um, this is like a huge portion. That's probably going to be two or three portions for me. Um, treating myself to some root beer. I love root beer and I love cream sodas. Um, if you like root beer and cream sodas, please let me know down in the comments below your favorite brand uh, So when I'm and, and where you're from. So when I'm traveling, I know what to look for and try it out. And this is going to be the question of the week. Um, if you don't know what the question of the week is, um, starting with the April giveaway, I am explaining that in that giveaway video. What is something that from your country I need to try? Tell me your country and tell me your favorite foods, your favorite drinks. That can be a meal that I get at a restaurant. Tell me which restaurant, tell me which city. It can be candy. Put it down in the comments below. I'm really interested in hearing your answers. Damn it. I fell asleep on the couch reading. And I slept for 10 freaking hours on the couch. And then I spent two hours just doing stuff in the house. So my reading plan is out the window, I guess. I think I want to film a TBR this week, so probably today. Because this is also my TBR for the um, Magical Readathon. I do have a small business with uh, skincare and stuff. Uh, yes, I know you don't always see that. But believe me, my skin is worse if I'm not using skincare. And I know um, if you've been following me for a while, I know how I'm quite passionate about um, skincare and makeup and stuff. And yes, I do have a brand that I sell as well. And I coach people and stuff. Um, and I have some amazing clients. Um, it's not a big business. It's just like a hobby that I make a little bit money off. Similar to how other people might view YouTube. Just to be clear, I'm not making money off YouTube, like at all. I'm spending so much money on this <laughs> uh, with like the help for editing um, and all the boxes that I'm getting and everything. Um, I, this is a costly hobby, <laughs> but I, I like it. So for this reason, because I do have a small business, I my taxes need to be business taxes and uh, combined with my personal taxes. And because I'm getting stock from my employer, um, it just gets a little bit complicated. We haven't opened any boxes this week yet. So why don't we do that now? This big mess over there is all stuff from boxes that I um, don't keep um, that go into my giveaway. Ways. It's a whole mess here. It's a whole mess. I need help. <laughs> I'm not gonna film all these unboxings anymore. I'm going to film new unboxings, um, except if I have a special box in there that I haven't unboxed on my channel yet and that I'm not getting anymore. Okay, so I decided on the Wildest Dreams. I have six boxes Wildest Dreams here. 
Uh, I don't know if I have unboxed them on my channel with a rating. I think I, I filmed some unboxings, but only half of it. After these six, all that is left is One Shelf Love, which I am, might unbox here um, next week. A Hookup, which I might unbox here next week. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that because I love the book Hookup. A Fox and Wit, which I want to unbox for the review. And then two book Hooked Up, which I might, I, I'll have to check up if I still get them. I think I opened before, probably unboxed them on my channel. Um, because usually the book comes wrapped in brown paper like so with a little sticker on top. This box ships from the UK and um, starts at 18 pounds. This box I think is a very good middle ground between these full 30 bucks boxes um, with a lot of Phantom products because in here we always get a newly released YA book. We get a um, self-care product like a bath bomb or lotion. I think this is a good box for people People who don't want clutter um, and fandom stuff. So the first box that we look into is self-care. It's a little um, turtles all the way down bracelet. Then the promised tea bags. The tea is everything 13 reasons why. It's a vanilla tea. It sounds good. Um, I'm gonna make this in a, in a moment probably. I'm looking for a new black tea to drink right now. The self-care product uh, seems to be a pumpkin wax melt um, and we have some tissues for all the places you cry in public advertising in here a breathe printer that's quite nice the book of the month is the places i've cried in public this is a really cute edition i like the um, colored edges and the drops here are like embossed you can feel them emily loves reese and she thought he loved her but she's starting to realize love isn't supposed to hurt like this so now she's retracing the story and untangling what happened by revisiting all the places he made her cry because if she works out what went wrong, perhaps she can finally learn to get over him. Next is Community and Coming Out in 2020. We have another art print. There's two books in here. Then there's a sticker, Book Lover. This is a cute sticker, I'm gonna keep that. Then we have some advertising. Oh yeah, there was tea, but it's gone. I think I put it somewhere else. Fruit Burst Infusions. And then we have a Butter Bath Melt. So then we have an R, um, Hideous Beauty. Dylan is forced to come out after his secret relationship with Alice is exposed, but to his surprise, everyone appears to be supportive. Following a tragic accident, Dylan begins to realize how little he knows about the boy he loves. Huh. And this comes out in June 2020. And then the book of the month is full disclosure. Uh, Simon is HIV positive and positive HIV won't define her. She also knows that uh, celibacy is the best way to stay safe. Enter Miles Austin, intelligent, funny, and way too sexy for Simon to resist. But her classmates don't know that she's HIV positive. And what is the truth worth in the hands of the wrong person? That's quite intriguing. It has a signed book plate and we do have a letter from the author, which I put in there. So I think the value of this box with a tea, I'll just hold up last month's tea. I'm okay with that value. I'm not counting the art print. As I said, it's a cheap item as I'm not counting the advertising. We have two books, um, paper bags. I would put them at like together at like 15 pounds. Then we have this bath melt and a sticker and this. So I think the, the value of 18 pounds is absolutely in this box. The next box is best of YA 2019. That's what it looks like. So the tea is holy pepperoni, apple and cinnamon tea. I'm not the biggest cinnamon fan, but I know some people who are tea bags. So the self-care item seems to be a cookie. It's a shortbread cookie, um, hand iced with sugar paste with some of our favorite releases from 2019. It has gluten and it doesn't say it's vegan. I do like one of the boxes, they sometimes put a cookie in that is vegan and I think, um, and they taste wonderfully. And this is a Christmas card. One can never have enough socks. Another Christmas has come and gone and I didn't get a single pair. People will insist on giving me books. Albus Dumbledore. We have an art print, art stopper art print. And we have pet advertising and then the book oh this is very thin oh it's pet i've seen covers of this float around a lot but i think this is my favorite one because it has gold on it there are no monsters anymore or so the children are taught but then we meet pet a creature made of horns and colors and claws who emerges from a painting pet has come to hunt and the shadow of something grim lurks somewhere familiar gem must fight not only the, to protect her best friend but also to uncover the truth eight pounds for this and then we have card the cookie and the tea i'm not at 
15 bucks here. Okay, number four is retelling. I do have to say that the spoiler card is a little bit boring. I would prefer if they put the monthly art print that they've seen in here. So we have some advertising as always. We have a cinder inspired art print. This is quite cute if you are a cinder fan. Then we have a Priory of the Orange Tree inspired bracelet. The self-care item is a Deathless Girls inspired bath bomb. Um, the tea is I was born in the water and I was born off the water. The surface breaks inspired tea and it is green seaside, Japanese sencha, lemon verbena, spearmint and cornflowers. That could be good. As you can see, they seem to be working with the same tea company most of the time. Okay, and the book, Paula's Fair. Nice cover. I love like bright yellow covers that are not the random small things that we needed to read in school. Jade and her three best friends rule their glittering LA circle. They control everything until one night, the night four boys spike Jade's drink. Lock her in a room and attack her, but they chose the wrong girl. Jade is made of claws and fangs. Jade will have them clutching at their throats and choking on blood. She wants revenge. And now she won't rest until she gets satisfaction. I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Um, again, I think the box worth wise is just barely getting towards the 18 pounds but um i'm happy with it uh because i use these items so far it's pretty much all of it is most of it is contemporary right so um yeah i like that it has a little bit of a different selection uh so the next book is chills and thrills um we have um this packing it like this is kind of weird we have the letter from the author on top um and then the book so here's um the haunted mask print um then we have it, he could be the monster if it kept other humans um a little notebook inspired by V.E. Schwab. the self-care item i'm assuming this is a wax melt it's a soap snowflake soap I'm not sure how long a tiny piece of soap like this lasts. Snowflakes are a big symbol in the book of the month, so this beautiful handmade snowflake soap is perfect. Each snowflake is different. And then the tea is inspired by the graveyard book. Red velvet, inspired by a slice of luscious red velvet. I love red velvet cake. This delicious blend is made using the finest black tea with chocolate and vanilla. Mmm, am I? I think I'm gonna use this one, not the vanilla one. That sounds amazing. Then we have the book. It's called Wranglestone. Winter is not the only unwanted visitor. I haven't heard about these. So most of these I haven't heard about. I've heard about the places I've cried in public and pet. Let me know, please, down in the comments below, um, out of all the books that I've just unboxed, uh, we have one more, so include that. How many have you heard about, like on Bookstagram, on like Book Twitter, on Booktube? In a post-apocalyptic America, a community survives in a national park surrounded by water. But when winter comes, there's nothing to stop the dead from crossing the ice. Peter is forced to leave the community and he must help the boy he's always watched from afar hurt the dead before the lake freezes over. But a dark discovery reveals the sanctuary's secret past. Ooh. Not sure if I'm in for a zombie story right now. Last one. Okay, so this is how the box comes. Um, the paper usually is closed. Oh, and this one is actually what I what I just said about how you, we, they could improve the spoiler card. Look at that. March 2020 has a an image. Be hella fierce. Ooh, I love that theme. We have a Legion inspired coaster. Some days are harder than others, but I'm ready to live each one of them. Um, I do like coasters, but um, this is a paper coaster and I don't like a branded paper coaster for the sole reason that if I put drinks on it, they will get like the wet, like what's it called when like a cold drink, you know, gets wet outside. I can't think of the word. Anyways, you get like the wet circles and um, the paper will break. The self-care item seems to be, I wanted to say chocolate, but it's a wax melt. <laughs> it looked like chocolate. 
It's shadow me inspired. Then we have our tea bags and a bracelet made by our sister store, Wildest Dreams Jewelry. It's just like, like a cheap rubber band. The tea, I'm nobody's sidekick. Annabeth Chase, ew. Percy Jackson inspired tea and it's a black tea with almonds and sour cherries. Ooh, that sounds good as well. Advertising and then a an art print postcard inspired by Sadie. This is kind of cool. The book is quite thin again. Fight like a girl. It's been a month since Trisha's dad was killed. Wandering out drunk in front of a car, Trisha is driving and her mother grabs the wheel to try not to avoid him. Trisha doesn't know exactly what happened that night, but she's afraid it's going to happen again. Wow, not what I expected when I read Fight Like a Girl. Let's do like a cliche booktube cover. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at all the wonderful books I have. Look at the wonderful books I own. Look at it. So I'm quite happy with this box. I know that it's not for everyone, but I'm probably gonna keep subscribing because I feel like I'm getting um, a selection of books that I probably wouldn't have picked up otherwise. Let's do some hour of pure reading joy because honestly, I am enjoying um, Today We Go Home so, so much. Um, I'm surprised how much I'm loving this book. Um, I'm completely drawn in. I kind of don't want to put it down and I just put it down because I'm getting super tired. Um, but I'm hoping with the amount that I slept that now I'm going to be super awake and I just can read for an hour. I'm pretty much halfway. So hopefully we get to some unboxings. So page 291, page 216, and then page two, uh, 343. It's going to be gift after gift after gift. Oh, well, the first one is just like, it's probably a letter. I do not want to put this book down. I am so surprised by how much I'm liking this. I would have never picked this up in a bookstore, to be honest, because I'm usually not that... It just didn't sound that interesting, but it freaking is. This is all about uh, strong women in the army um, today and back in the Civil War. It's about uh, the reality of war and coming from, like, being raised in Germany, I haven't learned a lot about history from other countries. Only like big events in like human history. This is so good. I love that this is not overshadowed by this big romance. I'm not saying there's no romance in here, but it's not driving the plot. It, it isn't made an incremental part of the plot. It's, it's just about strong women and the hardships they went through and I'm stunned and I don't want to put it down but the next uh, so the next uh, open gift is here and I need to drink some tea I also made the black tea um, the red velvet one and wouldn't you know it it actually turns red isn't that amazing come on I think that's hilarious I haven't tried it yet so here, go here we go oh that's good we are um, on page 291 I'm so ready to finish this. Probably is my favorite book of the year so far. And what a surprise it is. I, I did not expect this to be this good. If you have read any good fiction that is based on true, true events so that you learn about history, but the characters can be made up. They can also be real, but um, I want this to be a story that I follow. I don't want this to be like a nonfiction, just facts book but I don't want too many facts about like the history to be made up. Share your favorite books like this with me, please. I want to read more like this. So good. So in our book where it says open the gift, we have a letter and it is the nostalgic gift. After loving this book so much and liking this quote, this is definitely gonna get a place on like my wall. On page 74, our heroine was talking about a lipstick like a silver bullet shaped lipstick. And we got the silver bullet shaped lipstick in the color uh, that they were talking about. Beautiful color, by the way, love this color. Because the value of 
Um, these three is probably a little bit more. I'm really excited to get to page 316 and 343 to discover what these are because I have no idea what these could be. They're quite heavy. Anyways, let's continue reading because, oh my God, this is so good. I have shed some tears and I'm not an easy crier in books. We are on page 316. So let's look at number 316. I am so excited. We are talking about somebody making breakfast, Johnny Cakes. She answered as she pushed her bangs back with her forearm, a spatula in her hand. She's playing with some civil war recipes. So I'm assuming this could be like a cooking set, kind of like um, a, a mix to make Johnny Cakes with a recipe and maybe a spatula. That might be the sticky thing. Ooh, something's falling. There's a spatula. Yeah, the flowers coming out. The bag is open in the bottom, so... But this packaging is awesome. And on the back, it has the recipe. Only 30 pages to go um, until we have the last gift. I'm on page 343 and we're getting to the last gift. Loving the gifts in this box. Let's see. Oh my God, this looks beautiful. Oh, this is a magnet. This is cool. Oh wow, look at this. There's even an entry in here. Ah, uh, there's the items in here, referring to items in the book. This says size seven, which is tiny. It's just a simple golden ring and I'm loving it. Oh, that is so wonderful. I don't know if you can see it properly. It probably is cheap because they couldn't afford real jewelry in here, but I'm loving it. I'm actually loving it. And then a oh, little handkerchief. That must have been specially printed for this box. Honestly, I am impressed by this box. I'm so, so happy. The items are amazing. $34.99. And then, I mean, plus shipping, it's ridiculously expensive for me, um, but I'm loving this experience. So I'm happy to pay this. But honestly, I think we definitely have the value. We have another 37 pages that I'm just gonna read real quick and that's it for the day. And then that's it for the month. I wasn't able to finish The Widow Clico. I wasn't able to finish uh, Khalid und das wilde Sprachpferd, uh, Snowflower and the Secret Fan. Wasn't able to finish any of those. That's it for Tuesday and that's it for March. Hello, got all dressed up to go outside, but first I wanna tell you my reading plans for this week. Um, I will start Kingdom of Souls. Um, this is going to be a buddy read with two lovely ladies. So hopefully I can tell you more about what this is about. It's um, It has some witchery in it, some witchcraft. And if you wanna know why I bought it, it might include some information about what the book is about. I recommend you watch my Amazon book haul, I think it was in December. And then I'm going to be reading my almost flawless Tokyo Dream Life. Then I'm going to start winter. Um, I needed to finish that for a year that series, I think. Aside from that, I'm going to read Warrior Prime this week. And then I also want to read The June Boys. There you have it. That's my plan for the end of this week. I want to show you what it looks like from at the back of my house because it's a beautiful sunrise. I thought about showing this to you for a couple of minutes now and I see how quickly the sun is rising and it's almost gone. I will read for maybe an hour unless I get tired and then I have to look into what's to do today I still have to do like an hour of stuff for my taxes I have a lot of work to do since I was off work Monday and Tuesday there's a shitload to do right now I started Warrior Prime um, on my walk and I'm really getting into the story quite quickly. It's interesting. I'm hooked, uh, which is good. I was a little bit afraid that after today we go home, I'm going to be in a book hangover um, that doesn't allow me to read a lot, um, but it doesn't look like it's happening, so that's good. So yeah, um, let's check out the editing help, do a, day, a schedule for the day, and then get cracking. 
Well, hello, it is Thursday evening. Um, today was an interesting day. My brother came to visit me. So yeah, other than that, I was working all day, just um, had a little bit of Korean class, now I'm cooking. Um, I did read Kingdom of Souls this morning. I'm on page 79. I feel like this book so far is really, really interesting. I um, have, I, I'm struggling with my preconceived, just because we have Orisha, black people, and we have like tribal, Jembe's and everything. I feel like we're in African village hut, whatever. It feels like no technology, and uh, but it's happening like more at a right now and not medieval times or something. I'm crossing my fingers for no forced love story, which could potentially happen. I also started Warrior Prime yesterday. I don't know what page I'm on because I am. I have like percentages and I think I'm right like around 20%. I'm really enjoying it so far. But before I get more into Warrior Prime, I'm going to start reading Winter tonight. I was supposed to read 45 pages roughly yesterday and I haven't done that uh, because I fell asleep at like 9 p.m. And then I'll watch Survivor because for me Survivor is on on Thursdays. That's the plan for tonight. We have like four hours to do all that. And I think that's absolutely possible, right? Let's go. Wow, I have had a, such a incredible long day. So it's Friday. I've been tried to go to sleep early, but I couldn't. I think I only slept like three, four hours. Then I had to get up for a phone call for like a telephone conference. Been working all day and I have just come off actually two hours learning Korean with my friend. I am now just super tired. I have read my today's portion of winter. I am honestly incredibly enjoying being back in that wonderful, wonderful world. I just feel a little bit off during the past two days. I don't know, I keep having circulation issues. Like when I get up, I get dizzy. And I'm wondering if I'm just missing some like vitamins or something. If I'm missing some protein, I just have to watch my what I'm what I'm putting into my body um, really well for the next couple of days. I think so. I do want to have some dinner and then get back into Kingdom of Souls. I think I scheduled like 400 pages of reading for Saturday. So let's see. Let's see what I can do. Good morning, it is Saturday and um, it's actually a really beautiful day. I look like a mess, but I wanna sh go shower after I went out for a run. Um, but first, before I do that, I, for some reason, am in a huge mood to um, try myself at planting things again and growing things. I was really good at it for a couple of years. I had my own tomatoes and bell pepper, pepperoni, and all that kind of stuff. But um, the last couple of years, everything just died that I tried to grow. Try myself at growing a bonsai. I don't know why, I just do. I already did read my daily portion of Kingdom of Souls in winter and I am excited in both books. Today on my plan is finishing Warrior Prime, which I will start doing on my walk and then hopefully get as much into almost flawless Tokyo Dream Life because that is on my plan to finish today. I don't know how far I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna try finishing, I'm gonna try. Let's soak some seeds and then get going. I just came out of my bathtub and I look crazy. I finished Warrior Prime in the bathtub. I feel like the storyline in the book was extremely tropey, unimaginative and not unique. It just felt like I've read it a million times, but it was a really nice setting. It was a wonderful atmosphere and I really did enjoy the characters. So I am giving it four stars because I feel like my enjoyment level was more of a three star, but I don't think that's the book's fault. That's just 
me not being in the mood for it. Now I will sit down with my almost flawless Tokyo Dream Life, which did not get the best ratings, um, to, be, to be fair. I am going into this book expecting this to be a slightly trashy rom-com. I'm currently also reading Kingdom of Souls and Winter at the same time. Let's dive in. <sighs> It is a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. It's honestly, it's gorgeous outside. The sky is absolutely blue. Oh, it's just wonderful. I do want to sit outside reading. I want to enjoy the sun. I spent a couple of hours getting everything ready. Now it is a little past four in the afternoon. I still have a lot of reading planned for the day. I have roughly um, 100 pages left in my Almost Flawless Tokyo Dream Life, which I am enjoying a lot, a lot more than I thought. I have roughly 100 pages left and um, this should be a little over an hour because I'm reading like 70 pages in an hour. Then I have today's portion of winter, 45 pages. Kingdom of Soul, 40 pages, and then I want to dive into the next book. Today on my schedule, there would be the June Boys, uh, which I was scheduled to finish today as well, but um, due to the whole delays, I might not get as far as I wanted to. And I might dive into sequel to Crown of Feathers. I was thinking about The Last Letter from Juliet, which is a Once Upon a Book Club book, but I already read one of those these weeks. See how much I am like having to decide what to read next is really bad for me. I need the plan and just stick to the plan and not having to like shuffle it around. So yeah. Let's finish these. I am finished with my almost flawless Tokyo dream life. And honestly, this was a lot better than I expected it to be. The only thing I do have to say is that the ending felt kind of forced and quick, but there were so many things in here that I really admired that um, they didn't like smooth over too much um, about uh, traditions, about different cultures between Japan and Americans and how this girl coming from America, um, trying to fit into the Japanese world, is tr learning about this new culture and things that just work differently, that seem weird to her, that seem wrong to her. And well, she's learning that even though these things feel wrong and weird to her, that she cannot judge and expect people to accept her. I'm born between three and four stars. I think it was a four star reading experience for me. Okay, so let's start Heart of Flames. I was waiting for this like crazy. I loved Crown of Feathers last year, but my problem is my sucky brain. I don't remember everything that happened. I don't even, even remember like the most important key points. I don't remember why I loved it overall. I know that I spent like half an hour telling my friend why I loved this book so, so much. Um, but all I remember is that um, I loved some of the character development and I loved that some parts were not falling into the cliches. I'm not saying that there weren't any cliches, but some parts where you would expect a certain cliche, a certain trope to kind of hit, it wasn't happening and it was turned around a little bit. I loved the vulnerability and the flaws and the heroine that we're following from the beginning, not just being this superhero, perfect, morally perfect person who is just automatically the best at everything. I don't remember it all and I hate it <laughs> that I don't. I really should have recorded my love for this book and, and why I was so raving about it instead of just sharing it with my friend so I could review it myself. Anywho, I will start reading this now and I hope I get back into it and then the really important things that I kind of forgot are going to be repeated so I remember them. Let's get into it. Let's see how much I can read. Maybe I can read another like 50 pages. 100 pages. I should be reading like 300 pages or so, completely on track with my reading schedule, but we both know that's not gonna happen. So let's just get into it. Um, as I said, we are already so much better than uh, the last couple of months. I am very close to being on track. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really good with where we're at and I'm very, very satisfied with this week's reading. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks. I am looking forward to reading another Once Upon a Book Club book soon. 
yeah, I'll, I'll probably tomorrow morning I will have to sit down and rearrange my schedule a little bit because of um, the script availability. Um, things that I wanted to read next week are not going to be available yet, so I'm going to have to push them. So let's see. Um, but I'm going to enjoy doing making that plan. So now let's get into this big baby. I am getting back into it. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm just tired now and I'm gonna go to sleep. Closing off this week. Um, it was an amazing reading week. I really did like it. I hope I can um, just continue doing this and um, I will easily, easily read 80% of um, my planned TBR, which would be amazing. I would really, really enjoy that. So fingers crossed that um, we will continue doing it this well. And I hope to see you again um, on my channel real soon. Until then, bye!